Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and today we're going to get into what's normal versus abnormal on a cervical or neck DMX report. And the reason why I want to dig into this is I get uh, emails sometimes from patients and questions from patients that are very freaked out about what's on their DMX report. And I want to try to dig in here a little bit so I can clear up some misconceptions. So this is part of that uh, six video series where I'm releasing one a week uh, because I'll be gone for about six weeks. And uh, these won't have the live Q&A that my videos often do, but I will periodically jump on Facebook Live on Euro daytime. Uh, and obviously that may not correlate with US daytime, but it'll give some of my European viewers a chance to get into some live Q&A. So uh, the idea of what's normal versus abnormal on imaging is a key to understanding what's wrong in your neck or your back. The, the problem with the concept though, is if you take imaging in isolation, we often see patients with awful looking necks or backs, for instance, on MRI, but they don't have a lot of symptoms. And at the same time, we see patients who don't have all that much on their neck and back MRI who are disabled. And there's this disconnect that's often there between the imaging and what's wrong with the person. So you only can use imaging as one part of the puzzle. So if we look at this with Venn diagrams, and, and I know we all hate these, probably hated these Venn diagrams in school, but they can sometimes be useful. Uh, so we have over here uh, things that are found in normal people, meaning patients or people who have no neck or back pain. And we have findings on image here that are only found in patients with neck or back pain. So we really want to focus on this part of the Venn diagram, right? We don't want to really know much about that. We do want to know this. And again, we don't want to know this. And that's the trick. How do we get pieces of information off of an MRI that are likely associated with someone who's having pain and how do we ignore or take with a grain of salt other things on the images that are unlikely to cause someone pain? And again, we want to separate these two categories, normal for age, let's say with wear and tear, and clearly abnormal or highly likely or more likely that that particular finding is causing a symptom. So for example, um, if we look at C1, C2 overhang on a DMX, right? Uh, you've probably heard that before and me talking about that. So C1, C2 overhang. Uh, and we look at the Katz and Freeman study. They, they put that into two different categories. We had a DMX, uh, finding that was only found in neck pain patients or at least 95% likely uh, to be found in neck pain patients. So that was anything greater than four millimeters. And if you were under two millimeters of, D, of C1, C2 overhang, that was found in a lot of patients who had absolutely no history of ongoing neck pain. So this shows us what good research in this area looks like. So for instance, this is a statement from a, uh, a study is a x-ray uh, spondylosis of these levels. And there's a lot of information here that talks about, Hey, you've got to try to correlate this with what the patient's complaints are. Um, 
So you may want to consider getting an MRI. This is the kind of stuff we're looking for, right? We want to see reports that qualify what it is we're seeing, saying this is pretty common in wear and tear. It may or may not be causing your patient symptoms. Maybe get a CAT scan or an MRI scan and clinically correlate what you're seeing with the patient's symptoms and physical exam. But this is not good, and this is what we see in some of these DMX reports, a one millimeter anterior translation of C4 and C5 during flexion. And there's lots of things in here uh, that are clearly normal. So that's normal. That's considered to be wear and tear. And we also know that we've got one millimeter C1, C2 overhang and two millimeters on the other side. So we know that's normal uh, just based on what we talked about. So why is this even in this report? Um, and here they're saying these radiographic findings could correspond to suboccipital pain, but they're normal so they're unlikely to cause that person pain meaning they're found in lots of people who have no neck pain and just so you understand what we were talking about there one millimeter of translation means that instead of all of the vertebra being lined up like they should one of those vertebra is moving a little bit against the other ones but again uh, one millimeter of translation at three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven is a normal degenerative finding and not something to get excited about. This is, all, this is also not great. We have a DMX report that's talking about facet gapping at lots of different levels. Now, what they're talking about is that some of the facet joints open a little bit much during various movements, and this likely increases with age and wear and tear. However, we really don't know what's normal for this finding uh, and found in lots of people without neck pain or other symptoms, meaning what we're probably seeing here is a degenerative change. So it's not something to get excited about, uh, especially if it's occurring in the lower part of the neck where degenerative changes are common as we all get older. So in summary, be careful not to read too much into a DMX reports. Uh, don't be concerned or at least ask an expert if what you're reading is more wear and tear related stuff that happens to all of us as we get older or if it's something likely to be causing you symptoms. And the key is again, separating everything on that report into one of two categories. Those findings that are likely to cause symptoms and those findings that are just sort of related to wear and tear and are less likely to cause symptoms. And then like any other imaging study, a DMX must be interpreted as one piece of a diagnostic puzzle. It is not an end all be all. So if you read your DMX report and it freaks you out, Good news is most of what's on there in my experience is not something to be freaked out about. There may be things on there you need to be concerned about, but you'll need to consult an expert for that. So thanks so much for watching and have a great day.